giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. I'm going to hop in, and now we're going to move on over to the Carson subdivision. Um, leaping right in, I've got three teams that I consider locks in this division, and I think some com- so, and uh, two of these three will most likely be the winners coming out of this division. Uh, in my opinion, the top team in this division right now coming in is 1796, the Robo Tigers out of Queens, New York. Uh, they've got a double-digit cycle average. Um, they've got, I think I, when I did the math, I think it was 11 cycles on average. Uh, and with the added impressive feat of I watched them, and when they were under defense, they were still averaging over nine cycles, like driving against defense and scoring nine cycles. Granted, it was not the most amazing defense in the world. This is not 747 coming at them, but this is uh, they were still averaging super high numbers. So they're my favorite because they've uh, had to play under defense because they've gone to weaker events where they like uh, where there was no three offense strats against them because there was not a third offense spot to be had. So they were always against a defense spot. Um, so that is a t- ton of good practice for them. Uh, my second lot coming in is the 50, is 5172, the Gators out of Greenbush, Minnesota. They're the rank one winner at both their events. They've only lost three matches uh, so far this season. Uh, I don't have a number of their cycles because Minnesota video is garbage. So like I couldn't actually watch their robot because they cut the cam- <laughs> they like they change the camera angle every two seconds. It's like I had no idea what they were. I could like watch it, but I'd be like, oh look, they're good, and then it'd be watching some random teams. Anyway, um, so that's my rant. I'm not gonna rant about Minnesota cameras anymore today. <laughs> but like, so I have no numbers. Ah, uh, the really day's still for- young. <laughs> so that's true. It could come up again later. And then on my third lock is going to be 67, the hot team out of Milford, Michigan. Like, don't bet against hot at champs. Like, it's it's That's a hot you nev- take. You never want to bet against. Oh. Stop it. No, like, <laughs> there's, there's a few there's a few teams you never want to bet against at champs, and hot is one of them. They've had kind of an up and down season. They've been bounced in the quarterfinals twice from the number one seed. Once it was because their alliance partner broke. Once it was because they broke. So they've had some issues with breaking. Uh, they're still one of the best cyclers in this division. Um, once again, we're talking double-digit cycles and all of that. So I really like Hot's play. Um, there, I was talking to you know Mike, another one of our Infimidation hosts, is their drive coach. He was saying they fixed their arm issues uh, so that it shouldn't happen. What happened at uh, states should not happen again. Uh, so that's good. Uh, so those are my three locks. So then sort of in contention. So this is kind of my next tier down. So this, these are the teams that, depending on how they play, depends on how they do. Um, first off, 111, Wild Stang. I'm so excited to be able to talk about Wild Stang as a contender again. It's been a few years. Um, and it's so great, like, as somebody who's been in FRC for a long time, to see them back on the rise. They've got a 9.2 game piece cycle average. Unfortunately, what might be their doom is they only have a level 2 yeet climb. So that could be their <laughs> the fact that they don't have a level three is um, it's going to hurt them in the rankings and could hurt their pickability. Uh, my second one, thirty six eighty three Dave out of Ontario. Uh, they're close to that ten cycle average, but they are slow, which sounds weird when you say a ten cycle average and slow. But their averages, <laughs> bump, but their average gets bumped up because they're largely undefended. Like you watch their Elims matches and they were with uh, twenty fifty six, so. They weren't the ones getting defended. So Dave was kind of left on their own. And they were, like I said, there's, they, they, they got to speed up before they'll be able to do anything super well. Um, my next one, 4362, the Gems, out of, also out of Michigan, uh, one of the state champions this year. Uh, they're my personal pick to, be, to end up as one of these top four teams because uh, they've continuously improved over the course of the season after a rough start. But by states, they were one of the better cyclers in the state. And like anybody who watched those um, five match long Fimstein finals, uh, <laughs> got to, like got to see them play. Uh, they're definitely underrated. Like Richard in chat just said, uh, they're definitely an underrated team that could come in and make a uh, big splash. Uh, another one, eight seventy Rice out of New York, uh, very solid bop. But once again, with similar speed issues to Dave, where they're just not quite fast enough to break into the high the highest levels of this game. How do they make up for this lack of speed by making very few mistakes? Like when I was watching their matches, they drop very few game pieces. They miss very few shots they take. They miss almost, they do not make mistakes. So they make up for this speed issue. Um, and then my final court of in contention team is 619 Cavalier Robotics uh, from Chesapeake. Uh, their average pushed up a little bit because they didn't play against very good defense. 
Uh, so they were so it's hard to get an actual read on their abilities once they play against quality defense. But um, they did win the Chesapeake D, uh, DCMP, and they did do well. They were the top scorer on that alliance, so they're definitely one to keep an eye on. Uh, my I've got three dark horses. One fifty eight eighty three, the Spice Skiers out of Krasnik, Poland. Uh, they absolutely That's spicy. De- they, <laughs> stop it. They absolutely. <laughs> they absolutely <laughs> like. <laughs> they destroyed Turkey, right? Like they went there and they won both events. They got a chairman's award. But um, as Childish Gambino so eloquently put it, this is America. So oh, like, man. was the turkey too spicy? <laughs> like they're coming over from Turkey. Like oh, the t- okay. the quality of teams in Turkey compared to the quality of teams at this World Championship is very, very, very different. <clears throat> and there's sort of a lack of video from Turkey, so I can't see how they compare to a lot of these. American or Ontario teams that they'll be playing against. So if they can if they can step it up and play with the big boys, uh, definitely want to keep an eye on. Uh, another dark horse, thirty four fifty two, the Green Engineers out of Michigan. When they're on, they're on. Like they hit easy double digit cycles easily. Um, uh, do solo rockets, but they have major consistency issues. Like you watch in like one match they'll do five cycles, the next match they'll do fourteen, and then the next match they'll do six, and then they'll do twelve. And it's like literally there's no. <coughs> <laughs> Excuse me. And that's like not under defense. So they just have these weird consistency issues that they need to figure out. If they can be on, like if they can hit it, they are so good, but they need to stay on. Uh, and then my final dark horse slash just sort of an interesting robot is 747 Flight Crew from New Jersey. Uh, one of the top defenders in the entire world. Um, I would say uh, Ben has talked about them numerous on numerous occasions. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, and, hey, we're, uh, we're, to, to put it in context here, like of all the losses we've had, period, we're zero and four against this team. Yeah. Like they, they, they crush us every single time we play against them. Yeah. So like they're not a they're not a scoring powerhouse, but they're a dark horse because um, Ben made a very questionable pick when everybody saw <laughs> 225 take 747 second overall at uh, FMA. And uh, obviously it worked out. So definitely I could see something like that happening again where somebody wants to take that top defender in one of the top few drafts and could really help uh, with that. Uh, some of my, I guess, honorable mentions that I just don't have time to get into depth with. You know, we've got 234 out of Indiana, 1305 from Ontario, 1768 from New England, 1816 and 2052 from uh, Minnesota. That's what the state's yep. called. I blanked on the name. I could see it. I was like, <laughs> and then 2386 from Ontario. Uh, 3750, also from Minnesota, 4256, 4607, and 5050. All teams that are super, um, that are in contention, uh, with just have various flaws. A few of those are low onlys. A few of those have issues seating. Um, but just all teams that could be making a splash. So anybody else have uh, any teams from Carson that they think I missed? Uh, not a team that you necessarily missed, but uh, talking about 619 is that you didn't, I feel like they actually had a very tough road to go through because they did have to go through some major defense from 2537 in their semis, which and then 614 in the finals of Digital Chance, which they did defend them for quite a bit. Large 614 largely didn't defend 69 in the matches I watched. It was usually 614 was on, um, but uh, 401 and uh, the other robot 401 and 4541 were largely who they were against. 619 was largely left unmolested. But it's like I said, you it's it's they did play against defense. It's just it's they did not play against as much defense as some of my other teams. Let me put it that way. So okay. yeah, yeah. I guess, on, that, I guess that's more my point. Uh, yeah, of those teams, uh, I'll just talk about forty two fifty six a little bit more because I volunteered in an event where they played. They're they're just really cool and really fast, and they are low only. So I don't know necessarily what's the like best spot that they'll find on a champs alliance, but they are they are very fast and they are very good. They're they're kind of like one of those Jack in the Bot light type robots, and they only do a level two. Um, so you know, I don't I don't know necessarily what spot they'll find, but um, I hope they do well because I think they're a great team. There's, oh, I just wanted to hype up one eleven Wild Sang again because I just don't think it could be done enough. Just <laughs> having watching them rebuild from losing their entire build space to now cannot be emphasized enough one other thing i want to mention quickly there's a few teams that a little more detail 1305 can climb with a lot of other teams that have stilts uh the way they have it's almost like a four bar thingy so they can find some partners to double climb with i saw them do it at district champs i saw them do the north bay 
they've kind of figured out how to use their turret now. That was one thing they struggled with a lot when we were with them at Georgian, was they're like, okay, well, when's the best time to turn the robot? When's the best time to turn the turret? They've gotten a lot better. There's some other defenders, too, that are in this division. Uh, and another Quebec team that could also perform is 3386 Tornads. Um, you know, there's some interesting blood here that, uh, again, region shifting out. Other team, Wyndham Windup, not a team you necessarily want to be against. They got some brains on them. 1305 climbs, <laughs> the way it is, it's like, sorry, I just saw what Richard said. It's like, it's it's like 1114, but then it doesn't retract. I don't know the technical name for it, and I don't want to sound like a fool. So something <laughs> like that, basically. And it stays out, so they would, like, another robot would go up on their stilts once they climb on. 1305 would go on, climb underneath, and then the other robot would go back down and, like, hold them back up. So that's something that, you know, they've been doing a decent amount of, both in quals and in LMs. So look for that to be happening again on the Carson Field. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.